Hey, hey, Blue Table fans. It's times. It's times. It's times tables. Here's, here's Monocle, right? Awesome. So um, try, trying out new uh, nicknames on Elise. Uh, she uh, emailed me this morning. The email, yes, yes, this is going on. It is, you're not being punished. This is really, hold on, you guys tell me if you think this is punishment. Punishment enough. I get an email this morning titled Confession. Ooh, now you have my interest. So I go in and Elise explains to me that she knocked the soap dispenser off of the sink in the studio bathroom. Here she is. Look at how guilty she looks. Come on. I'm looking down in shame. Right? <laughs> All right, so anyway, which of course is obviously no, no big deal, uh, but I am thinking of the nickname property damage <laughs> is the thing, because this morning I went down, she was getting miniatures repaired in assembly. <laughs> yes, Dean? In her defense, it, it was the left bathroom. That one was already cracked. Right, why couldn't you destroy the one that's cracked and kind of leaks? It kind of leaks a little bit out through the thing. Is it? Hold on, we're going to, no, we're going to find out. We're going to find out. Hold on. Look at Sarah, so responsible. Yep, sure enough. She uh, broke the cracked one and the good one is still here. Yay! You're vindicated, Elise. Sweet, sweet vindication. Sarah likes vindication. Oh, I love it. She loves it way more than a normal Fancy person would love it. That's right. Yep. Is that what it is? People, people that need to be right love their vindication. And I'm too willing. I'm good at apologizing. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. See, I can turn it on and off like a faucet. Hey, so here's Guy here for a week trial run. We're going to see if he's any good. His name is Zane. He's playing a, you're playing a, a sorcerer in our D&D game. Right? Yeah. Right, and now you're painting zombies? Yeah, I'm just making them right. dead or undead. All right, fantastic. So anyway, I don't know if I mentioned this, but we're doing something called Radio D&D. We've settled it on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I wish I'd been recording it because it's been really good. I'm running a D&D module classic A4 in the Dungeons of the Slave Lords where the party starts off with loincloths. Not, not even light. They're, they're in this, ca and, they, and they actually have to feel their way around at first. And uh, you start with nothing. Then you find a, a broken piece of bone with like a sharp end. And, uh, and that's, that's your first weapon in this adventure. It is a great adventure. I've always wanted to run it. We're, all, we're almost all the way through. It's super exciting. And uh, I think I am going to start recording it because apparently last year our most viewed video was D&D Session 7. So there's that. And we were using miniatures, and I love miniatures. But the fact is, everyone's always painting. And then they want to go home to their families, you know. And it's a, yes, boo. It's for reals, right? People, come on. Take three hours out and play Dungeons and Dragons, for pity's sake. So, uh, yeah, so we're doing that. And, oh, so Radio d and is where I set up, in fact, here's how it looks like. So I set up here, this is all taken down now, there's my DM screens over there. And I set up my DM station and everyone just plays at their painting station and tells me what their, yeah. <laughs> Mike is playing worst cleric <laughs> in the history of everything. Party's yeah, it's pretty bad. In fact, we're, we're gonna, we're, I'm going to get Spinny McSpinnerton out for that one. All right, well, apparently he's already on another video, but I'll give you a, another look at him. Yeah. Mike sculpted and cast this figure just for this. So this is going in our line of figures. Yeah. We're yeah. actually going to get that up. If you want, uh, so that's, uh, that's Janine. Are you working Fransom? with Janine on that? If you want a copy of Fransom, the, the overweight pacifist. Half-elf pacifist. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So far, he's I've... like, do any of the kobolds look hurt? I go and try and heal them. And then all the whole party's like, Thro throw something, help us. And somehow, because I'm, I'm ready to let the dice fall where they may, I'm ready for, for Fransom just to be horribly killed. But alas, no, somehow he has survived so far. And, uh, but it was Ben's character. Uh, Gorok, uh, the half-orc, who, uh, who ended up dying today. 
Yep, I think um, I think he got an overdose dose of troll teeth through his torso. So anyway, <laughs> and uh, oh yeah, and both arms were ripped off. So basically, yeah, it was it was pretty much a horrible death for Gorok. Yeah, it was uh, it, it was it was pretty ugly. And uh, so let's take a look at some stuff that people are actually looking at. Are, are you looking at, working on, are you actually working on something different now? I am. Are these War Machine figures? What, what are these? Here, let me see them. Let's get them up there. Just base coats? Yeah, those look like uh, Privateer Press. Except for oh, let's, let's see him. He's a little wet. He's a little wet. Oh, yeah, and he's got like, yeah, a wound. Here, turn around so we can see the wound. That is a green stuffed wound. Hey, not bad. Thanks. All right. All that college work and fine arts. It actually probably is paying off. This is off, the first actually. recipe I've made all by right? myself. Oh, so. good for you. Fantastic. There you go. All right. So we're at Dean's table. Um, and uh, Dean's Dean's backing up a little bit. He's like, don't, don't. Uh, really, not much to see Nothing here. Not too much exciting. Right? At Just kind of yeah. the beginning <laughs> stages of stuff here. So there's that. So be excited if that's your project. Still working on the death core. This has been kind of a studio-wide thing. We are really in the home stretch with it. In fact, I think Mike is working on these um, Fantastico psychers. Yeah, I think 27 psychers. of them, right? This one's the so, can, can we see one? Hold, hold it up parallel to the camera. Okay. So there still need to be some more uh, right. details picked out, but this is the basic oh, color scheme. I love that. I hope we have more of these figures. These are by Confrontation. These are uh, the plastics uh, that they made, uh, alchemists. And we just gave them uh, las pistols and these staffs, and they make great death core uh, psychers, and they're on really cool bases too. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. So, wh hold on, what, what are you working on sculpting wise? Sculpting right wise, right now, I've got some. Uh, uh, let's see, technology <laughs> hammers. <laughs> <laughs> right. That I'm okay, go ahead. Thomas. Okay, great. And. Uh, <laughs> Great, Some, great. I, I believe a good name would be Thunderous Hammers. Right. Thundering Mallets. Okay, got it. And, uh, okay, go ahead. And, uh, and so I don't have them here, and they're all, they're all at home, but uh, just basically some that are themed for the future. Right. And eagles. A go perhaps a gothic future. Right, a gothic future where there's only right. fighting. Right. <laughs> in, in the dark blackness... Of, right. of the distant future, there is only fighting. Yeah, I think that's... That's, <laughs> that's, that's terrible. That's close. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So, uh, we already... The, these are the zombies for the uh, vampire, Studio Vampire Counts. So, in fact, let's, let's take a look at Studio Vampire Counts. I have 78 zombies. I made, I think, 40 more of them. And so that's plenty of zombies. Skeletons, I think we're coming up on 70 skeletons. In fact, let's take a look at the bin. You got, so this is the expansion on it, right? So here's more. This will bring the skeletons to about 60. I have these Vargeists. As you know, I just absolutely love them. A little bit of corking there. Uh, this model is a pre-paint, but the paint is very thin. Uh, this is by Confrontation, and it's an out-of-print model called Asian Devant. And I love this figure. It's my vampire, my level 4 vampire spellcaster. Absolutely fantastic. This is a conversion based on a high elf that's turned into a white standard bear. This is the Empire standard, which is kind of like this uh, winged uh, Grim Reaper type of figure. I'm absolutely in love with this banner. It's a great conversion. I just found it uh, laying in our bin of stuff. Uh, here's more confrontation plastics. These are on 40 millimeter uh, bases. These are going to be my pair of uh, vampire bats. So I am just, um, you know, g gonna test those in the game and see how, uh, how they work. Um, here's some uh, zombie ogre type creatures. And uh, I just converted these out of Crypt Ghouls. They are scaled kind of weird, but I think once they're painted up, uh, they should be okay. These are just fillers for the zombie units, you know, to kind of put right in the middle and uh, make them not so, not so boring. These are also fillers. I found this old uh, Harry the Hammer base. It's just primed black. I uh, put a couple skeletons on there, so it's like skeletons are kind of rising up out of this mass of, uh, you know, raw necromantic material there. So I know that didn't make much sense. So there's those guys. Here's just a, uh, a six base thing. All right, that's enough out of you guys. Uh, 
So uh, there's just two zombies becoming basically a filler for six. And, uh, you know, some hands. <laughs> All I had is uh, apparently left hands. So there you go. A bunch of one-armed guys coming up to haunt the living. Um, so that's actually, with, with this and maybe a few more characters, that's actually bringing my uh, Vampire Cats army close to about 2,000 points. And that means it's on. It's on, John. I'm coming for you. Okay. Yeah, it's going to happen. We had a uh, trade-in Empire army, and I think John's going to take that over, right? Yeah. Yes, I think it's a thing. And uh, if you are client BB waiting for me to get you your fantasy army, I am on the case. Never fear. I have some ideas. I'm still kind of looking through things. And it's going to be, it's all going to be worth it at the end. Um, we, uh, we are temporarily backlogged, but that should be cleared up in a week or two. And so we're ready to take new orders by all means. Don't be shy. It, it's okay to make an inquiry uh, just to find out, you know, how the process works and to get a number out there and uh, certainly let us know what what we can do for you because we want to we want to be the people that paint your army all right here's some necrons uh, by Ben whoops knock that guy over come on up up you go uh, these I think are lich guards something like that so that's how they look kind of this glowy magma thing going on I really like how this uh, necron lord turned out so that is what he looks like so there's him. Wow, I have the zoom all the way on, and it seems to be pretty clear, getting a really good close-up on that. So uh, there are those guys. Uh, here's digital, and that's what that looks like. So uh, what will happen is uh, our digital photographer will come in, and he or she, actually she, Shannon nowadays, um, will uh, take pictures of all this stuff for approval. That is uh, part of the process. Oh, we have this coming out. This is a Vampire Counts Army for client JF. And uh, you've actually seen that one. You've seen that one evolve over time. And I'm very pleased that it's finally rolling off the line. It's a really good looking army. And really gave me inspiration to do my own. What's on your mind, Sarah? Trying to get work done. Trying to get work done. There you go. And you're kind of over here by yourself. I am. I should put my desk right across yeah, from you. Yeah, I'd never get distracted. Yep. Let's do that. Yeah. That's a great I'd way I'd be to like, hey, Sarah. Get hey, Sarah, listen to this song. Hey, Sarah, look, here's a picture of a kitten falling off a kitchen counter. <laughs> I'll be like, no, Sarah, come on. Okay, but seriously. Seriously? I yeah. am. What's on your mind? Valhalla. That is what is on Sarah's mind. Yes, we're excited more. now. I am. So we were watching some of the videos for it, and I want to be up there. Yes, we'll be up there now. That's awesome. It's gonna be wonderful. Okay. And we still have some day passes available, and I yep. think we might have one private yep. now, room. Now we change it from day pass to event pass. I'm sorry. Because it's event one ticket is what I mean. gets you in for four days. Basically, we you feed you every single thing. You just don't stay on site. You get your own accommodations elsewhere. It's three hundred and fifty bucks. It's an awesome, incredible deal, and um, it's yeah, it's the whole thing. That cover that covers your food yeah. and you the come event. Early and do yeah. breakfast. Stay sixteen stay hours a day. Late. So mm -hmm. yeah, and use all the on-site amenities and hang out with us and the whole bit. So great option if you uh, want to do that. And then if you want a private room. And do the full complete event. Oh yeah. Where you're just you know private walk into room, the room is to ridiculous. Take a nap and do the whole thing. Right. We still have I think at least one private room available for the April event. Right. And um, probably at least a drop pod pass. Right. Maybe maybe two drop pods. I'll have to just right. double check on that. But don't drop, miss out. Drop pods awesome uh, cost less, but we kind of put you up wherever we can. Yeah, they're less in expensive the because then we're we're working out your rooming right. partner, you know, buddy kind of thing. Right. Get your own bed. I mean, of course, but I mean, right. you could be in any <laughs> that, accommodation. That'd be funny. Anything from like the uh, bunk beds to sharing one of the other right. larger rooms. Oh yeah, so. and we're excited. So, oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. and by the way, when you come to this, guess who your hosts are? Us two. Us two. Yeah, it's awesome. It really is, and uh, we have staff up, so you get to meet staff. You also, the day that you arrive, we all meet at the studio to shuttle up, so you get to have a tour of the studio, meet the staff. Uh, it's 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 a thing. Oh, here's my here's my awesome Phantom Titan, which is not for sale, and that I love now. Just looking at him makes me happy. So I took off this head, 
Uh, he has three different heads. They're not here right now. Some of them are stored downstairs. But I put on the uh, Warlock head, which is the most extravagant of the three. And, uh, and there's five sets of arms, too. So, uh, yeah. Also bought this. This is Pathfinder. Uh, this is like the real D&D &D is uh, setting. And, uh, and rule system. Pathfinder's fantastic. Put out by Paiso Publishing. And uh, basically, fourth edition made D&D &D into a completely different animal. And this uh, just revised it and focused it. So uh, this is a module. And look at how great the art is in this. It is great. Just absolutely fantastic maps. Um, everything full color, glossy. Uh, like here's, here's a map in it. Look at how detailed that is. I actually want to create that in terrain. Um, uh, which reminds me, we are... Like, we're, we're growing pretty fast, and we are kind of always on the lookout for talent, so it can't hurt to get a hold of me. Uh, we do require people that people actually move out here if it turns into a thing. Uh, typically for people outside the area, we'll do, you know, a week trial. So you do have to kind of come out for tryouts, so there's that. Uh, but it's definitely the way to go. Uh, in terms of figuring out if this is the thing for you, uh, and vice versa. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, like right now, I could. St I, I need a painter up top and a symboler down bottom, and I'm also opening the door. Yes, first time you're hearing it here first uh, for an assembler, not an assembler, a terrain maker. Like right now, I'm looking at the giant pile of terrain that we have to make, and that would be a thing where I, I'd want someone to work with me. I kind of want to be a mentor for that and set down standards, kind of look over ideas, uh, but the, you, you would actually execute uh, most of the projects. So that, I'm putting a feeler out for that if you're interested. Even if you live outside the area, uh, by all means uh, send me an email uh, to bluetablepainting at gmail.com. Okay, next item, some uh, really cool uh, Sisters of Silence pre-heresy tanks. Uh, they're magnetized up top for different turret options. And uh, I believe these are Forge World type doors. What are these uh, side armor things on here? Okay, it's really neat. And this is this is from uh, Minoth for uh, Privateer Press. This is our Exorcists, and these are really, really, really super keen. Uh, a bit expositional there. Yeah, just just tons of them. The sheer magnitude of this project is ridiculous. And we have all these extras then, right? Oh, look at these. Oh, look at these wheels. Oh, those yeah. are super duper. Tomb Kings project. Client JL. Them's a lots of Tomb Kings. All right, folks, ultra short video here. First off, I want to thank everybody who participated in the request for feedback video. That was very nice and uh, much appreciated. And I'm sure we'll inform our choices for how we spend our time for videos and promotions. Next item is called Ask Sean, where I'm going to open up the floor for any sort of questions that you would like. And of course, related to the studio, or um, you know, it could be it could be personal questions or advice. And uh, by all means, uh, let me know. I might not be able to answer all of them, uh, but I think it'll be a fun topic, and maybe uh, that'll turn into a segment that we do. Hey, Karen. Okay, so tell us the big news today, Karen. What's I am going on? I'm full time at Blue Table Painting today. Yay! So I got all dressed you, up. But because... you didn't quit your other job. No. You're still working there on Saturdays. Yeah, one day a week. Which is so. the cake thing. Yes, cake right. decorating. And and cake. So you enjoy that as I well? Do. Yeah. So I'm trying to wrap my head around why it would be so awesome here, and yet you would still want to ever be anywhere else. <laughs> well. Yo, yeah, putting you on the spot. Go ahead. Yeah, awkward. Um. I guess just because I do still want to hang on to my other job, I really like my boss there. Um, just want to help him out because I'm the, oh, okay. the top cake decorator, so helping out whoever awesome. else comes through, but right. don't want to do it. So you're kind of like a mentor yeah, type of thing. I guess, yeah. Training the little apprentice cake decorators. <laughs> exactly. You'd be like, don't decorate the cake that way, decorate <laughs> it this way. My way, yeah. All right. Yeah, but I definitely want to do this primarily. Huzzah. All right, thanks a lot, Karen. Mm -hmm.